Hi everyone, uh, today's date is Monday, December the 19th, 2011. This is Hydrocephalus blog number four. Um, I recently had some inquiries about posting a video that's a little bit more basic as far as what hydrocephalus is. Um, hydrocephalus is one of the most common birth defects out there. Each year, one out of every 500 births results in hydrocephalus. Another 6,000 children annually, annually develop hydrocephalus during the first two years of their life. Um, brain injury occurs every 15 seconds in this country and in some cases leads to the development of hydrocephalus. Um, there's approximately 75,000 discharges a year from a hospital in the U.S. with a diagnosis of hydrocephalus. Um, more than 50% of hydrocephalus cases are congenital, which means they were born with hydrocephalus. Um, hydrocephalus is commonly referred to as water on the brain. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can develop it. There's a bunch of different ways that will cause it or that could lead you to have it. Um, a lot of premature infants, when they're born preemie, um, have hydrocephalus. My daughter, Layla, has congenital hydrocephalus, um, meaning obviously she was born with it. We still don't know 100% um, what, why. That she does not have any other disabilities, no learning disabilities, no physical uh, deformities, anything. She's perfectly, you know, normal other than having hydrocephalus. Um, her brain is kind of like a uh, wet sponge that can't absorb any more fluid and she produces way too much of the cerebral spinal fluid and it has nowhere to go which caused her head to expand and her soft spot at 11 months old was this big which is roughly 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Um, she had to have the same treatment that everybody else, you know, under normal circumstances have. They have a shunt placed, which, uh, you know, it can be placed on either side of the head. Hers is on the right side. It starts about here. And it travels down the back of her head, down her neck, down her chest, and into her belly. So the shunt itself drains the fluid from her head, and it drains down into the peritoneal cavity so it can get absorbed, you know, by the tissues, and, and, and you know, then she will pee it out. Um, no statistics are kept by our government for those who develop hydrocephalus during their lifetime. There hasn't been any dramatic changes in the way that it's treated or um, anything like that since the 50s. 65% of shunts will fail within the first two years of placement. Um, there are some people who go their life, their entire life, you know, from birth until death, um, having one or two or three surgeries, a couple revisions here and that's it and they're perfectly fine. And then there are people who have hundreds and hundreds of surgeries and just many issues and, and problems from having so many surgeries. Um, as it stands, my daughter, who's 20 months, uh, she'll be two on March the 30th, she has had five. One uh, for the initial placement in February, one in June, nine days later, she had a complete uh, block, so they had to replace it again in July. She had one in the end of November and then one in the beginning of December of this year. So since February, she has had five total brain surgeries and been hospitalized seven times. Um, there's no cure for hydrocephalus. This is an incurable disease. Um, and it continues to claim lives of children, adults, old, old, older people, the elderly, you know. Um, a lot of the elderly get misdiagnosed with Parkinson's or uh, Alzheimer's because they have hydrocephalus. It can cause a lot of the same symptoms, which makes it hard to diagnose um, the older that you get.